I know that it has only been about 10 days since I last recorded and uploaded a video, but it feels like it has been ages. I think it's because I've been so busy in my real life, and also there's been quite a bit of conversation and buzz going on in the booktube community as well that I feel just feel like so much has happened and maybe not so much has happened at the same time. I've also discovered my love for everything and anything Book Riot. I absolutely love their website. I'm obsessed with several of their corresponding podcasts and their YouTube channel is phenomenal. So if you're wanting to dip your toes into the Book Riot content world before becoming completely immersed and obsessed like I have, I highly recommend starting with their YouTube channel and then going out from there. I've also been wanting to be more active in the hashtag be critical conversation that I think began sometime earlier this weekend, but I missed the videos that I think inspired this conversation because I haven't had time to catch up. But I do have thoughts and things I'd like to say. I don't know that anything that I have to add is new or innovative or interesting, but I really want to make a video about that. So look forward to a video on my love for Book Riot and on the be, hashtag Be Critical conversation, hopefully in the near future. But what we are really here for is the wonderful Reading Diversely tag that was created by Holly over at the Library at the Inches of the World. I'm so glad that I discovered Holly. She makes insightful, intelligent book review videos over a diverse variety of books and also incorporates her passion for graphic design in there as well. If you're not watching Holly, you're comp you're totally missing out and you need to go check her out immediately. But the icing on top of this wonderful like intellectual cake is that she's super engaging and active on Twitter. I've had some great conversations with her with even though the limitations of Twitter and in-depth com conversations are real it's been wonderful and I highly recommend you follow her on Twitter and check out her YouTube channel. Of course, her links will be down below. She created this tag and was so kind to tag me in the original video with the implication that I was someone who reads diversely or at least that's the way I interpreted it and I am so flattered to be lumped into that idea or that group but I don't consider myself someone who is diversely read. But it's the wonderful, excellent awesome thing about this tag is that it's a great way to make yourself more mindful and encourage you to read more diversely and it's really fun. So the rules to this tag are that you pick one book to recommend and one book that you want to read from each continent. Since I don't follow rules it will probably be more like several books for each category but because I'm not as well read diversely as I would like to be there are a few areas that the recommendation area will be quite small and the TBR will be quite large. And as I will probably say a hundred times in this video, please feel free to share any and all recommendations for diverse reads in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start with North America because, you know, it's where I am and I'm vain. So my recommendation for a diverse read from North America is going to be a book that I read fairly recently and it is called Adam by Errol Shrag. I have a copy of this book, I don't know where it is, but there's the cover. But Susie, Errol Shrag is a white female from Brooklyn. You're right, but she is also someone who identifies as a lesbian and this is a young adult coming of age story from the perspective of a cisgendered white male who spends a summer with his sister in New York City and and is taken for a whirlwind into the intricacies and compli complexities of gender identity and transsexuality. This isn't a perfect coming of age story, but it left me feeling way more informed about the LGBTQ community and it made me feel just like a more well-rounded person in general, which is a great thing for a book to do. So I highly recommend you check out Adam if any of that sounds interesting to you. So as far as TBR goes for diverse reads from North America, the list is practically endless, but I'm going to try to shorten it and not go into too much detail about these books because otherwise this video is going to be like an hour long. The first one that I have to mention is one that I'm probably going to push closer to the top of my buy list whenever I can finally buy books, and it is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. It's a collection of feminist essays by a woman of color, getting quite a bit of hype and sounds excellent. The second book that I have is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. I, I hear it is a lovely series of vignettes about a young Latina growing up in Chicago and a podcast that corresponds with the Book Riot universe re-inspired my excitement to pick up this book. A, a book that has been on my shelf for quite some time is Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. It is 
I believe it's by a Mexican author or a Mexican American author. It is magical realism, a love story, all mixed in with like a love for food and it's been on my shelf for so long and I'm always excited about it but then I never pick it up. I also have Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alira Sands which I don't think this book needs a whole lot of introduction. It's a quite popular young adult book and anytime I ever mention this book anywhere on social media everyone demands that I read it and it seems perfect for a diverse reading for among other reasons. It I believe it deals with some LGBT issues as well. I also have a ton of Canadian literature that I need to get around to. One of them is one I don't own and is The Arenda by Joseph Boyden. I've heard nothing but great things about this book and it, I think it will really open my eyes to a perspective that I've never c come in contact with and that's one that is also high on my buy list whenever I can buy books. I also have one that's not too diverse but it is El anything by Ellen Montgomery. I currently need to finish the Anne of Green Gables series and I have The Blue Castle. And last but certainly not least I have Luis Erdrich's The Roundhouse, which I believe is a Native American from Canada, along with many other pieces of Canadian literature that I have in my collection. While that list is pretty much endless, I'm open to more recommendations. Next, we'll just go ahead and head on south and go to South America, which I have, to my knowledge, read nothing from this continent, which is quite unfortunate. My selection for my TBR is kind of a duh and obvious one, but I've always wanted to read 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, but really I'm interested in hearing any recommendations anyone has for South American authors because it seems like they also have a real interest in magical realism and I'm totally into that. But even if you have South American recommendations that aren't magical realism, throw them my way please. Next, let's move on to the other side of the world and to an area that Holly referred to as Oceania, which I had never heard it referred to that before, so I learned something new. But that is Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific area in general. My rec first recommendation is quite obvious. Marcus Zusak is an Australian author who wrote my favorite book, The Book Thief, and another popular YA book that I've read of his recently is I'm Messenger, but his books really don't need my recommendation. A lot of people know and love Marcus Zusak. The book that I want to recommend from that area is Burial Rights by Hannah Kent. This is an Australian debut novelist. This is a fictional depiction of the last case of capital punishment in Iceland. It is quiet and beautiful and haunting and I, I absolutely adore this book. Easily one of my new favorite books. I can't wait to reread this edition because it was kindly sent to me, signed by my friend Frankie, and I just, I love this book and I highly recommend it if you're interested in looking for new Australian authors. As far as my TBR for Australia goes. I want to read more by Melina Marchetta, who is a fairly popular young adult Australian author. I read her one of her boarding school books entitled Jellicoe Road a couple of years ago, but I'm really interested in reading her fantasy series, which starts with Finnegan of the Rock, I believe. I also have a young adult contemporary, The Anatomy of Wings, by Karen Foxley. It is set in a small Australian mining town and is about a young woman dealing with having to cope with the sudden death of her older sister. And as far as New Zealand goes, I think the only one that I really want to read from there is last year's Man Booker Prize winner. I believe she was from New Zealand. It is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. That book is quite intimidating, not only in size but in content. I don't know that I would comprehend it, but it is a book that I aspire to read in the future. Okay, so now let's move on to Asia. My first instinct is to recommend Amy Rakami, but he is internationally known, so I'm going to give someone else a chance. And that is Jenny Chang and her book Three Souls I read earlier this year. I believe that Jenny Chang is a Taiwanese author, but this is set in China in I believe the 1920s or 1930s. It's been a while, but it's a beautiful story about a woman who has passed on, but is stuck between life and her afterlife because she has to deal with some of the decisions she made during her life and she has to remedy those before she can go on to her next life. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of historical fiction set in China that I highly recommend. I haven't seen enough people reading or talking about this book so please check it out if any of that sounds interesting. As far as books that I'd like to read, I would of course like to read more Murakami. I do own his most recent book, as you know, the Kalula Sukuro Tazaki and his Years of Pilgrimage. I'd also like to read almost anything else by Mirakami. So if you have a recommendation, I've read Sputnik, Sweetheart, and Norwegian Wood, so please feel free to give me Mirakami recommendations as well. I'd also really like to read The Remains of the Day by Kasu Ishiguro. I read the Never Let Me Go a couple of years ago, and 
at the time I liked it but didn't love it but it's one that's kind of it's very sticky and has stayed with me since and I really need to reread that as well but I would also like to re read the remains of the day because I've heard wonderful things about it especially from the lovely Ashley from Climb the Stacks. And last but certainly not least I would like to revisit The Kite Runner by Carla Duzzini. It was the common book the year that I was a freshman and I only read about two-thirds of the book but I'd really like to give it another chance and read more of Carla Duzzini's work in general. Again, I'm super open to more recommendations from that area of the world. Next, let's go on to Europe. My recommendation from Europe is kind of an obvious one. It is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safan. I haven't read a whole lot of other pieces of literature that I feel fit into this category of diverse and Europe. This was originally written in Spanish and it was translated to English. It's a beautiful book set in, I believe, World War II era Spain. The writing in this is so gorgeous, so I can only imagine how beautiful it was in the original Spanish, but I highly recommend this book. It's easily one of my new favorite books, and it's like one of the best-selling books of all time for a reason. As I kind of stated, I had a hard time thinking of or finding diverse suggestions from Europe, so I went with a book that I had on my shelves, and it is The Likeness by Tana French. The first book by Tana French that's in this series is In the Woods. I read that a couple of years ago and didn't love it, so I haven't picked this one up yet, but I think that I'll like this one way more because it, it focuses on a character that I liked considerably more from the first book, and it's about a uh, an Irish cop who has to deal with this case of a woman who has been murdered who looks a lot like her and also was carrying the identity of a of someone that she had went undercover as. Sounds really good. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. Maybe it's because it's been so long since I read the first one, but I do want to read this soon. And as I've said already, please feel free to share any diverse reads from Europe in the comments below. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we go to the huge continent of Africa. And unfortunately, to my knowledge, I haven't read anything from this continent, so I would enjoy a plethora of recommendations for this continent. I'm hoping to remedy this really soon because I recently bought Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who is a Nigerian author and this sounds beautiful and wonderful and I've heard great things about it, but I do need more recommendations from authors in Africa. And that is the Reading Diversely tag. Woohoo! This video was very informative and helped me identify some of my gaps in cultural reading, namely South America and Africa. So as I said like a billion times in this video, please feel free to share any recommendations you have specifically from those continents, but from any continent in the whole world. So now I have a handy dandy list of people that I would like to see do this video. So I tag Christy from One Book More. I tag Nancy from Nancy Reads. I'd like to tag Ariel from Ariel Bissette. Barry from Baz Pierce. Brittany from Biblio Brit, Emily from Emily Jean, Sarah from Sarah Actually Reads, Jackie from JACQUIB1985, I believe that's the username, Denny from From the Shelf, and Jessica from Foolish Oats. Go forth and read diversely. <laughs> thank you all so much for watching and thank you Holly so much for tagging me in this video. As always, please feel free to share your thoughts on anything that I've said here today down below. And I hope to see you soon with a new video.